Okay, our final speaker between now and lunchtime is uh, Mike Jones, uh, product manager, senior product manager <laughs> at Mendeley. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you, Graham. And um, thank you, Jana. Thank you for having me. And um, that was quite a tough act to follow. I, I'm, pro I'm probably going to be less provocative and stimulating than that, just to manage expectations. <laughs> but I'll do my best. And I'm also going to mention citations a few times in my talk. But this, uh, that's a pre-that talk mention of citations. I need to go home afterwards and rethink citations. And uh, just bear in mind that it's going to be a uh, I, I haven't been informed by Jeff's uh, ideas in, in, in the presentation. Um, so I'm going to talk about data, research data uh, sharing in science and, and the promise that it holds for science um, and, and what we're doing as, as Mendeley, as Elsevier um, in the area um, and, and, uh, and then some of the challenges and issues that, that are faced in, in the area. So hopefully open up some, some kind of discussion topics at the end and some, some uh, things to, to think about and debate. Um, so firstly, could I get a show of hands? So uh, is, um, how, what proportion of people are, are actually practicing scientists in, in the room? So it's, yeah, maybe a quarter or so. OK. And um, how many people think that sharing data is a good thing? OK, cool. <laughs> Amazing. And how many people have, sh have shared data themselves? So if you are, OK, that's a really encouraging high proportion. And, and when you're doing research, how many people would say that they actually consume data from other people um, as an input into their research? That's, that's a bit lower, but, but still fairly high. OK. So um, yeah, cool. That's good to know that there's, there's support. Uh, for it. So let's, let's kick off. So a bit about me. So I'm a product manager at Mendeley Data. Um, Mendeley is, is part of Elsevier. Um, so uh, I work as part of the research data management team at Elsevier, which, which produces a number of, uh, of products facilitating um, data sharing. Uh, but I, I work with a team based in London um, to build data.mendeley.com, which is our, our data repository. Uh, the repository came out, out of beta about two months ago, so it's very early days. Um, I've been at Elsevier for about a, y a year, um, and previously I was at Nature Publishing Group for two and a half years. So I know the Altmetric guys very well, and I, I know the Fig Show guys pretty well. So um, yeah, it was very interesting to, to hear Andy's, uh, Andy's talk earlier, the, the update on Altmetric. Um, so why are we here? So science is changing. And uh, so the previous scientific publishing life cycle uh, was that a, a scientist would come along, uh, carry out some experiments, perhaps observe some phenomena uh, using instruments, capture data uh, with acquisition tools, and the data would go into temporary storage. And in most cases, that's where it would stay, right? And then they would write a paper on the basis of that, carry out some analysis and write a paper. Uh, and that's kind of the uh, kind of linear process and other scientists would come along and perhaps read the articles, build on those conclusions. Um, but the data would stay, uh, stay local uh, in, in the vast majority of cases, so it would be rarely, rarely shared, rarely available um, to other researchers to use. Um, but with technologies such as pr uh, primarily the internet and also mass, you know, scalable availability of data, data storage, uh, that offers the prospect for um, the data itself to also be shared at scale. So uh, the data can go into persistent storage. Articles are still written. That's still the primary artifact uh, for, consume, uh, for uh, communicating uh, research. Uh, but the data set can also be, be shared with the world. Um, and that the availability of data publicly at scale facilitates some, some great outcomes. So this is. And what I'm going to present here, this is really just a very sort of simplistic, I guess, schematic view of things. Um, but I'm, I'm going to present the kind of the promise that data holds. Uh, so first of all, transparency. So the researcher, when they're reading the paper, they can now uh, get to the underlying data um, if the data is publicly available. So that, that really facilitates transparency. Uh, reproducibility. So if methods and software, for example, are also shared, uh, then... Um, uh, there's much, much greater uh, possibilities for other researchers to try and reproduce the experiment, see if they can validate the findings or not. Uh, it also means that potentially scientists can use, other scientists can use the data in ways that the original scientists hadn't, hadn't thought of or, or um, hadn't done themselves. 
and generate new findings. Uh, so kind of multiplying the, the, the pace of discovery. Uh, and it also provides another means for collaboration. So obviously science is inherently collaborative and, and, and has been forever, but the ability to communicate about data offers just another, another means of collaboration. Uh, citations, so <laughs> with all the caveats Jeff mentioned, uh, just very simplistically, I'm saying the author will get more potentially uh, citations by virtue of being able to also receive data citations. And some studies have shown that, that um, articles where data has been made available um, also receive more, more citations. Uh, a really important factor for funders is that they don't have to pay for the same data to be generated twice if the data is made publicly available. And so uh, funders um, are, are really uh, more and more mandating that, that data should be made, um, made publicly available. So data sharing has potential benefits for, for other researchers than the original researchers, for the author themselves, uh, for funders, and, and for science overall. So it has a big promise. So the question then is, why isn't it happening more? Why is data sharing happening only perhaps at scale in certain fields like astronomy and genomics uh, and not more broadly? Um, and the answer is, I mean, the, the answers are many fold. It's a very, it's uh, a kind of an area rife with, 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 with tricky issues. Um, but I mean, two of the main ones are uh, the infrastructure for sharing data isn't, isn't fully developed. Um, but also the incentives uh, are, are kind of, unfortunately, it's, it's a kind of commons issue. So the, uh, the incentive for the scientists to uh, use other people's data that's been shared is there, but to actually share the data themselves uh, may not always exist. Um, and that's why um, we try to bring out um, the, the benefits to the author in terms of citations, and that's why funders are, are really pushing it to try and generate that, that, that push, the kind of supply side push for the sharing of data. Um, but uh, so how, yeah, and, and that's, that's the slide uh, mentioning funder policies. Um, obviously, this is quite a U EU uh, focused slide. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, there, there will be a huge impact of, of, of today. I, I'm actually planning to stay in Scotland after this talk. <laughs> so I think you guys called it right on, on that. But anyway, let's not go into, into the politics. Um, but uh, so, so as, as Mendeley or as Elsevier, um, the way we look at the, the issue uh, is to try and help um, data rise up this kind of pyramid of value. So these, these are, um, just at a very high level again, are the requirements for, let's say, as a scientist, if I want to benefit from some data that somebody else has, has created and reuse it, um, these are the things that need to be in place. So as, as a bare minimum, of course, the, daughter, uh, sorry, the, the data has to be stored, right? So um, if the data hasn't been stored in the first place, there's no way uh, it, it can be benefited from in, in, in future. Um, then it, it has to be uh, shared or made publicly available. So often um, uh, the, the, the tr sort of means of transmission of data will be personal, right? So you might, you might know... Uh, somebody uh, who, who's generated some research, and you might get in touch with them and say, uh, you know, would you, would you mind sharing the data with me? And that, and that happens a lot, uh, and that's great. Um, but probably a step beyond that in terms of, um, of value is to make it publicly available, um, although there are issues with that which I'll, which I'll come in on to in, in, future, uh, uh, in, in the next couple of slides. Um, Beyond just it being shared, it has to be discoverable. Is discoverable. So it's all very well there being lots of data out there, but it's a bit of a, a needle in a haystack situation. So how do how does how do I as a scientist find data that's that's actually relevant to me in in, in, in that sort of sea of data? Um, the data has to be comprehensible. It has to be well described, um, and it has to be sort of you know solid solidly presented, uh, and it also has to be valid. So um, is, is, you know, is it accurate, is it, is it consistent, and so forth. Um, and I've, I've kind of, for each of these, put some initial um, sort of ways that we address these. So for the first one, for stored, um, there are a number of in initiatives around data rescue, which is where data which hadn't been um, uh, sort of stored in, on, on a long-term preservation uh, medium, uh, we actually help and encourage scientists to do that. Um, 
In terms of shared, so uh, again, there are concerns and issues around, for example, confidential information um, and uh, the, the, the incentives to share. And, and this is where citations can, can, can potentially come in because they give authors a, 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 a further incentive to share their data. Um, in terms of facilitating discoverability, uh, metadata is really key. Uh, good quality ar metadata around the data, you know, um, categorization metadata and so forth. Um, now, one of the issues there is that if the author who's sharing the data has to retroactively add the metadata, um, that can be an incredibly onerous process. So that, that places a real barrier <laughs> on data sharing. Um, and so I'll, I'll talk a, a little bit about how we're trying to help with that. Um, in terms of the products we have. Um, it, so in terms of being comprehensible, it should be well described. Um, and in terms of being valid, curation and, and review come in because those are processes that can help um, ensure the data is valid. So I'm gonna talk through some of the um, products that, that in this space can help facilitate some of these things. So in terms of the basic level of storage and sharing, um, data repositories enable that. And um, uh, so this is, uh, as I mentioned, the, the uh, product that we're working on, Mendeley Data. Um, and it's very similar to, to Figshare, it's fair to say, or Dryad or other generalist open data repositories. Um, so it allows authors to post their data or their software and get a DOI for it. Um, and we here, here in this example, um, this is the data supporting an article. Uh, so we provide a way to very easily get to the article. Um, and, and for the article to be cited. And it has features around it such as versioning um, and, and, and so forth. So uh, data repositories are, are, are a good way for, for authors to share their, their, their data. And there are a number of them out there. Um, the next sort of step on, on the rung is, is discoverability. So um, we're, we're developing at, uh, at Elsevier, a data search engine um, called Data Search. So I, I think um, our branding guys weren't being very imaginative <laughs> that day. But so Data Search allows um, searching amongst a whole range of repositories. Um, we're indexing currently all, all, the, all of the main ones, and it allows um, researchers to search by keyword uh, within the data files themselves, not just the, uh, the data set metadata. I think one level above generalist data repositories in terms of value potentially is um, domain-specific repositories. So in, in certain fields, um, the data that, that, a, that a scientist will generate will often best live on a domain-specific repository. So for example, if you're working in genomics, you, you're going to use uh, GeneBank to store your gene sequences because that's, that's uh, the place where they can be best described and they can best be found uh, altogether. Um, so what what we do in terms of the, uh, allowing access to that data um, is provide a link from the article to the domain-specific repository. So we have a data linking program that includes about 50 different uh, uh, repositories. Um, and so that, yeah, again, supports the, the use case for a researcher reading the article and wanting to look at the underlying data and being able to do so um, very easily. Then going further up the chain, so in terms of uh, um, validity, so um, we have a, a, a number of data journals and da um, where articles can be written describing data sets, and they will be peer-reviewed, and not just the article itself, but the data set will be, will be peer-reviewed. So in that sense, um, we're, enabling the, we're making sure that the data is well-described and comprehensible, uh, and also that it's, it's valid um, and it's, it's, it's been reviewed. Um, so we, this is an example of a, a data article which describes, again, the, the data set in, 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 uh, in very great detail. And th there are a number of these data journals out there. So um, uh, Springer Nature, uh, where I used to work, has scientific data, which is another uh, fantastic journal. So um, it's, it's not just us. Um, there's many, many, sort of many players in this kind of emerging uh, ecosystem. Um, and the final one I wanted to mention is um, we, we've recently acquired an, an electronic lab notebook. So this um, is called Hivebench. So the idea here is um, researchers working in the lab, previously they may have used a, a paper notebook. Um, using an electronic lab notebook, it, it sort of automates a lot of the processes that would have been very manual 
uh, if you're working with paper. So um, very easily uh, um, inserting protocols and, and kind of tweaking them to, to vary the experiments and seeing the, the effect on the results. Uh, all of that kind of workflow is facilitated with an electronic lab notebook. And again, there are, there are a number out there. So um, Digital Science, I believe, has, has lab, lab Guru. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all of these things are interoperable, as I believe most of the products in, in this area are. So uh, you could very easily use uh, Figshare with Hivebench or Mendeley Data with, with LabGuru and, and vice versa. So everything uh, is very API driven and, and interoperable. Um, and that, that kind of helps to make the whole thing work, I think. It wouldn't make sense to have a, um, a kind of proprietary uh, set, of, set of products. Um, so sorry, yeah, there's a uh, high benches screen screenshot. So uh, it, we work with a number of initiatives uh, in, in the industry. So we were party to the to the data citation principles that J uh, Jeff demolished just there, just now. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but I mean we will we'll have a look at that. Um, we're party to the Research Data Alliance. Um, which is a, a range of industry initiatives to kind of try and foster data sharing and help to uh, work out ways to build this, this infrastructure uh, and, and the sort of building blocks of the in infrastructure and then the connections between the building blocks. Um, so issues and concerns. So um, it's certainly not, not easy and it is an emerging area. So uh, the first two I've kind of mentioned, those are the really, really high level uh, problems, so lack of infrastructure and the, the sort of mismatch of incentives versus benefits, the time cost versus benefit to the author for sharing data, um, which really, really isn't, isn't trivial at all. Um, there are some other issues that are slightly perhaps lower level and more kind of feature based. So uh, confidentiality is a huge concern in health and medical sciences. Um, it's sort of essentially very, I mean, it, it is very difficult to share data it has to be very thoroughly anonymized, um, permission has to be sought, IR, IRB approval and so forth. And even then people are, are reluctant to do it and, and, and you know, with, with good reason. There, there are big, uh, big issues to over, overcome there. Um, so fear of misuse, so I think uh, a, a very, quite a pre prevalent fear is that if I put my data out there um, and I don't know who's using it, and I don't have contact with the people who are potentially using it, then they could, be, they could misunderstand it, they could uh, uh, you know, misconstrue it, and um, bad things will happen, and I'll be cited, and, and, that, and that's not good. Um, <laughs> and then fear of being scooped. So um, if I put my data out there, um, you know, other people can use it and, and get, get value from it, but I, I'm the one who created it, so, so I, I don't want that to happen. So often funders acknowledge that, that last concern um, by, by allowing embargo periods. So um, you would have a sort of a first use period for, say, a couple of years, and then after that, the, the data should be publicly um, available. So um, yeah, there are, there are issues, and um, I think lots to talk about. And perhaps I'll, I'll finish there and just open it up for, for questions. Um, so thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? We will look yours next. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Laura. I'm from Edinburgh Napier University, and um, I'm a librarian there. Oh, so you mentioned a couple of issues. Um, yeah. One that wasn't on the list was mm. trust. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. given the way that Elsevier's <laughs> behaved towards the open access movement, mm, why yeah. on earth would researchers trust <laughs> Mendeley's data repository with mm. their own institutional repositories, the UK data service, etc., yeah, etc.? Yeah. Et et yeah. You did mention there are a lot of other players in this case. Sure. Um, so, in terms of trust, do you mean in terms of it being used for nefarious purposes or commercial purposes or? Or just in general, I mean, I, I mean, we so we have um, uh, very clear terms governing that you know the data that uh, that's deposited with us. Um, so we make it clear how the data will be used and how it will be preserved. Um, another point which I, I didn't mention is we we archive it with we archive all the data deposited with us with a with an archiving service um, called called Data Archiving and Networking Services based in the Netherlands. Um, and so 
they preserve the data essentially for the long term, so it will always be accessible at the DOI that was given to it. So even if um, Elsevier were to disappear tomorrow, the data would always be available. And it's, it's so if you like, it's mirrored at an open archive, at a, a sort of permanently open archive. So that limits anything that we can do that anybody else, you know, couldn't do, if you like. So we're sort of reducing our, um, if you like, the, the, the private, private ownership, if you like. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> um, so I mean, uh, yeah, that that's uh, I think I think the best answer I, I you know I can I can give on on that. So it's, it's it's just there's a commitment to being open. You know that is the mission, and and so by partnering with the archiving service, that's that's something that's sort of making that commitment concrete, if you like. Um, okay. So I was wondering, you talked about um, uh, public data in terms of reproducibility. Yeah. I was wondering, obviously, it makes it much easier to reproduce the kind of data analysis going from the data to the results. But is there yeah. a risk that it stops you testing the reproducibility of the data acquisition itself? Because mm. I work yeah, in astronomy, no, say, and if yeah. you form your telescope, if everyone works mm. on the same data, yeah. you don't yeah. find that out, and then mm. no one's going to build the second kind of telescope because it's redundant when the data. Yeah, no, no, very good point. Very good point. Um, yeah, I think so, so. I mean, I guess the the best answer I, I can give is probably the data availability is is a step towards reproducibility, but it doesn't actually get you all the way to reproducibility. Definitely not. So one would want to reproduce the data acquisition as as well. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a very that's a very good point. Yeah. I think we have lunch. You already answered the question. <laughs> In a, one more question before lunch. Hmm? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, I'm a PhD student from Human Geography Department. Yep. So I'm um, just wondering what incentive you use to share the health data, data for which confidentiality agreement has been signed. Yep. And I'm just wondering if you have had any success in doing that. Uh, yeah, no, good, good question. Yeah. Um, so we, we uh, I mean, it, it is very early days actually for our service. We've only been live for, for, for two months. So we haven't actually managed to get there yet. Uh, in terms of sharing uh, medical data. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, the incentives are the same, I think, as in other fields, that potentially, you know, um, you know data can be reused and it, it adds to transparency and so on. Um, and we're working with, we have a number of uh, medical journals, obviously, within Elsevier, so working with, with them to, to better understand how um, we, c we can serve their data sharing needs. But at the moment, it's, it, you know, it's not something we've, we've, we've cracked yet. I don't think, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> No, no, it's a tricky one, isn't it? <laughs> okay, thank you, Mike John. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>